Breaking news, Canon launches a 410 megapixel full frame sensor. Canon leaks a new APS-C camera that's unlike anything they've ever launched before. The newest drone, the DJI Mavic 4 has leaked and the OM3 has leaked too. I'll give you all those details and more, but first I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You need a presence on the web that isn't social media. Head to squarespace.com slash Tony and try for free setting up your own website. Pick one of their gorgeous templates, choose a domain name. Not only can you have a website, but you can take appointments from clients, sell products and almost anything you can imagine. It all starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out completely free, no credit card required. When you love it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. First, something fun. This is astronaut Don Petit changing the lenses on his Nikon Z9 in zero gravity. I'm so jealous being on Earth absolutely sucks. You have to find a surface to put the lens down on. He even replaced the cap, which I've never done in my life. Okay, now a huge story. Canon announced a 410 megapixel full frame sensor. Yes, for real. It's not a camera yet, but maybe it could be. It'll do eight frames per second at 410 megapixels. That's actually a really fast readout speed or it can do sort of quad pixel combinations where it can do up to 24 frames per second if you get the monochrome version of the sensor. So they'll be selling the sensor in both full color, which is with the bare filter, red, green, blue filter on it, as well as monochrome. Now, this will mostly be used for surveillance, medicine, and industry, but why not put it in a camera? I love the Canon 5DSR, which was supposedly a studio only camera because it was like the first 50 megapixel, high megapixel camera, no AA filter. I would totally buy a 410 megapixel camera. And yes, I know it's going to be expensive, but Canon, you have the opportunity to move up market here. There's a significant portion of the photography community who will spend any amount on a camera to get the latest and greatest. If you sold it for 10, 15, $20,000, I promise, you would sell some of this because there are so many people out there who crave perfection and will do anything that it takes. I know that seems like an absurd amount of money to spend on either a professional tool or a hobby, but look at what people spend on boats. <laughs> We're in the Connecticut shoreline. People spend hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on boats, and usually they're not that much into it as people are into photography. I totally think there's room for camera manufacturers to create very specialized, expensive tools. Now, coming to us from CanonRumors.com is a leak of the latest Canon APS-C sensor. And the picture you see here is kind of a mock-up based on their best guesses. They're saying it's going to have a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, but that it's going to be stacked. Now, a stacked sensor means it has a fast readout speed, and that means it won't suffer from rolling shutter. So that's something you want on sports cameras, but also video cameras. And to date, I don't know of any APS-C cameras with a stacked sensor. So that's going to be something new. It'll shoot 30 frames per second stills, but I don't think that's its specialty. I think it's more of a video camera because listen to these specs, 6K RAW from an APS-C camera. It'll do 4K either at 120 or 180 frames per second, but I'm thinking it's going to be 120 frames per second based on the other specs. Or it'll do full HD 1080 at 240 frames per second. These are incredible capabilities. It'll support C-Log 2 and 3, and it'll have a full-sized HDMI port. Now that spec there tells me that it's going to be a cinema-oriented camera, but APS-C, and that's not something Canon has really done recently. In fact, the cheapest cinema camera that Canon has now is the R5C, which is $3,400. An APS-C camera could come in much lower and there is a market for this. Like Sony has their FX30 APS-C camera, which is only $1,800. Canon does not have a competitor to that and it's very popular. Sony also has the ZV-E10, which is $1,100 and a great camera for vloggers. But this is an entire marketplace that Canon is missing out on. So my theory is this is gonna be Canon's competitor to those two cameras. I'm calling it the R10C, though I'm not sure about that name. Canon Rumors is saying it's going to come in under $1,500 and will be launched the first half of 2025. I totally believe this. This makes total sense. Canon should have done this years ago. 
But honestly, their APS-C lens lineup has been really weak. But now that we have some Sigma lenses filling in the gaps for them, I think you could put together an APS-C Canon rig pretty well, or at least in the near future. In other news, Imaging Resources back. Now this is imaging-resource.com. And if you aren't up to speed, this was one of the most popular camera blogs for decades. And then as the industry changed, it lost advertiser revenue, things slowed down, they eventually shut down. The website got bought by like a jazz guy as part of a bundle, and then it just sort of died. But now my old friend David Schloss is the head editor. They're making new content for it. So go check it out. They have a YouTube channel that you should subscribe to also. In flying camera news, the DJI Mavic 4 Pro has leaked. This leaked video clip shows it unfolding and nothing looks unusual here until it spins around and we see the front end of it. We see the new design has the camera projected out the front and supposedly it'll be able to look 90 degrees straight up, which DJI drones have not been able to do in the past. Now I did have a drone that used to do this, the Parrot Anathi was my favorite drone for a while. And that's a feature that I loved because you could be flying around and looking up through the buildings or the trees. It was just a useful tool to get. The lens arrangement is basically the same. You have 24 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 150 millimeter equivalent. Be sure to subscribe to see our review and know whether you should buy that because I won't get one for free from DJI, but I will buy one right away so you can get an unbiased review. Finally, the OM Systems OM3 is leaked. After I recorded this, OM launched an official teaser. They're highlighting a physical dial for in-camera filters. I've slowed it down and zoomed in so you can get a little bit better look at the camera. It'll be launching February 6th. This comes to us via 43rumors.com. Check out these pictures. This looks like a vintage film camera. It doesn't seem to have a hot shoe on top, but it does have big prominent analog dials. It's nice and thin. So OM is hopping on the retro camera craze, which is something I love. Photography is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be sexy. But the leaker does say there's not really anything new except for the looks. And that's what I would have expected from OM Systems. They're not doing any innovation. They're simply repackaging stuff. But in this case, that's probably enough to get a lot of people to buy it. To try to figure out the price point, let's look at the OM-1 Mark II. It's $2,400, 20 megapixels, 120 frames per second, and a 5 million dot viewfinder. I think this will come in cheaper. I think it'll still have that same 20 megapixel sensor because that's all they seem to use. I think they'll drop the frames per second down probably artificially to 30 frames per second and give it a lower quality viewfinder and price it at $1,500. They're also launching a couple of new lenses, a 17 f1.8 and a 25, but those are just rebranding refreshes of the existing optics. So they'll change the look and add some weather sealing, but again, just sort of upcycling stuff rather than anything new. In the comments, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace, who makes amazing websites incredibly easy. Social media these days has been chaotic. And honestly, I don't trust any of the owners. I like to have my own presence on the web. So I have northropphotography.com. Chelsea has chelseanorthrop.com. You too need your own domain name to show off your photography, your video reel, your personal projects, your business, whatever it is, start at squarespace.com slash Tony. Set up a website, a store, custom email, take appointments from clients, whatever you can imagine starts there. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thanks so much, Squarespace. Bye.